your hand and hold me still I'm fearfully and wonderfully made I'm fearfully and wonderfully made I'm fearfully and wonderfully made I'm fearfully Hi, this is Bill Reichert, National Director with Campus and Community Ministries here at CMDA. So glad that you joined us again this week for our weekly uh, devotional and prayer time. In just a minute, we're going to hear from Dr. Stan Cobb, who's going to open up God's Word to us. But before we do, just a couple of housekeeping issues. Firstly, we want to hear from you. So if you could, put your prayer concerns, your prayer needs in the comments section down below. We take those prayer concerns and pray with uh, pray for you, that is, just beyond this time, and in the days and weeks ahead. So uh, really do covet those. And so do put your prayer concerns down below in the comment section. And just as a, another uh, piece of uh, encouragement to you, I hope this time has been something that has been spiritually encouraging, uh, something that you have been blessed by. Um, I would encourage you, I'd invite you to share it with others. Let others know that this is happening. Share it on your Facebook page or other social media. Uh, let them know because it's every Wednesday at 12 p.m. We haven't deviated from that time. And so they know that on this Facebook page, they'll be able to discover the latest devotional. Also, we do post these devotionals um, on our YouTube page, our CMDA Student Life YouTube page. So if somebody misses it, if you miss it, you can go to the YouTube page and you can uh, look at uh, the previous weeks or other weeks. Uh, we have them all archived there, so they're available to watch at your convenience. All right. Well, let's dive right in. We're going to hear from Dr. Stan Cobb, who has been serving in the Dallas area with CMDA. He's just an incredible man of a deep faith, and, and I always am encouraged by what he has to share. So, Dr. Stan Cobb. Happy Wednesday, everybody. I'm Stan Cobb, Dallas Director with CMDA. I'd like to share with you today, welcome to our devotional time. Back at the 1st of March, I went to see one of my physicians and I got there, I was the first patient of the day and uh, the receptionist was anxious. I don't know another word to put it and she was busy printing out some new paperwork and she turned and saw me there and she said, I'll be with you in just a minute, I've got new paperwork. And as she turned and walked toward me, I said, it's okay, I haven't been to China. And she didn't smile, but she said, you know what the new paperwork's about. And I, I said, yes, it's gonna be okay. When I told her it was gonna be okay, I had no idea, neither did she, what the next few months would hold for us. It started with COVID and it spread and it affected our students. Students were scared and uh, they worried about their parents and their families and our fish and physicians were concerned and they were trying to get information on this particular virus. Nurses, PAs, RTs, everybody. And then came the quarantine, which for the students meant loneliness and separation and more worry. Um, for some physicians, it meant no elective procedures. For many dentists, the same thing, only emergencies. And uh, it meant a level of stress for those who were treating the people with COVID. And when I say a level of stress, I mean a huge level. So some people were really busy and others weren't busy at all. And just when it looked like there might be a way to get through this thing, the death of George Floyd came along. And we were faced with our own sin of racism, which was very painful. And then 
On top of that, anarchy broke out. And in cities across this country, people were um, scared. And lawlessness, people lost businesses. It was a hard time, still is a hard time. Very hard time. Fortunately for us, the fabric of this country is not coming apart like a cheap sweater. It's not. Throughout scripture, throughout God's word, there are records, records of obstacles, battles, illness, all kinds of things that God's people have had to confront. So today I'm going to bring to you a little message uh, about a king, a young king. And this young king, um, recorded in scripture, uh, a, a particular battle that he faced. And he recorded how it was handled on the front end. And I like it because it's a psalm of hope and it's a psalm of victory. Psalm 20 is a prayer and a declaration. David records in Psalm 20 an intercessory prayer on his behalf. In fact, that's how the chapter begins. It's an intercessory prayer on his behalf. He allowed others to pray for them. And then he affirms who God is. He mentions what the world trusts in. And he mentions what he trusts in and how he sees victory ahead. And lastly, the con congregation affirms who God is by his very nature. Now, let's, let's read this scripture. And if you'll allow me, I want to uh, comment a little bit as we go through it. Um, so this is the intercessory prayer. May the Lord answer you in the day of trouble. May the name of the God of Jacob set you securely on high. I love Hebrew poetry because it rhymes ideas instead of words. May he send you help from the sanctuary and support you from Zion. The sanctuary, Zion, what are those places? The place that God dwells. May he remember you and remember all your meal offerings and find your burnt offerings acceptable. We have an acceptable offering. That sacrifice was Jesus Christ. and It was satisfied at Calvary. May he grant you your counsel. May he grant you your heart's desire, I'm sorry, and fulfill all your counsel. We will sing joy over your victory. And in the name of our God, we will set banners, set up our banners. May the Lord fulfill all your petitions. So he has an intercessory prayer prayed on his behalf a king, and he records other people praying for him. And then he has a response. Now, I know the Lord saves his anointed. He will answer him from his holy heaven and with the saving strength of his right hand. So God, he, he trusts God and he acknowledges that. I know God's gonna answer my prayers. I know he hears me. And he's going to deliver me. And he says this, some boast in chariots and some in horses, but we will boast in the name of the Lord, our God. What a declaration that is. What a declaration. Now, we don't trust in horses and we don't trust in chariots. But what are some of the things that we trust in? Well, we trust in our health. <laughs> we trust in our health care. We trust in our economy, our money. 
and we trust in our abilities to get along. And we trust our city leaders to keep us safe. David said, that's what other people trust in. I trust in the name of the Lord our God. And this is how he sees it happening. They have bowed down and follow, fallen, but we have risen and stood upright. And then the people respond, Save, O Lord, may the king answer us in the day we call. So we have this wonderful psalm, and David uh, allows uh, intercessory prayer to go on on his behalf. He declares who God is, and then uh, how he sees the victory. So what are, what are some action points that we can take away from this? Well, very often, um, if you're in school, or you're a physician, or you're a nurse, or a PA, or RT, or whatever, you're expected to be strong. David allowed them to pray for him. The king humbled himself. If a king can humble himself, a doctor can humble himself, a student, a nurse, a PA, an RT, we can humble ourselves, ask for prayer, or allow prayer, for us, that's an action point that we can do. Number two, we can affirm who God is and trust him and see ourselves by his grace, the victories he's gonna set before us. And then third, as we get to the end of every day, we can give him the glory and thank him for it. Let's pray. Almighty God, we have battles to fight and obstacles in our path. You have demonstrated throughout history that the battles are yours, that you might be glorified. Help us seek our comfort in you, our inspiration in your word, our strength in the body of Christ. Give us humility to seek prayer from others, always affirming you and trusting you will see us through to our victory. In Jesus' name, amen. Grace be upon you. Thank you, Stan, for sharing from God's word today. It, has, it is always a blessing to hear from you, so thank you again. Well, let me leave you all with the Lord's benediction and blessing today as we leave our time together. Receive the Lord's blessing upon you. May Christ dwell in your hearts through faith that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and the length and the height and the depth and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled up with all the fullness of God. Amen. Be blessed this week. See you next week. Thank you.